Canadian Air and Space Museum's Pioneer Award. This tribute is testament to your outstanding accomplishments as an aeronautical engineer, manager, and leader. Your work with AV Rowe and Avro Canada through the Second World War, the Korean War, and the Cold War eras has been of lasting benefit to Canadian aviation and is most deserving of this honor. I would like to join the members of the Canadian Air and Space Museum in commending your remarkable achievements. On behalf of the Government of Canada, please accept my best wishes. Yours sincerely, Stephen Harper. It's a dynamic museum, and all kinds of things are happening here, uh, building aeroplanes, replicas, um, education, education um, programs for the young people, and um, a lot of other events, including the Wings and Wheels, the wonderful Wings and Wheels heritage events. And uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased that, as I say, this is my favorite museum, and I'm so pleased that, uh, to receive this award. I'm going to share this award with my guys. I, I know that, and I'm very sad that so many of them have flown off the planet, and they're not here with us today. But. They were arguably the best engineering team ever assembled in Canada or even in the rest of the world, and there were reasons for that. But anyway, they were wonderful, a wonderful team, and with that team, I reckon we could have done anything. It was a great shame that it was all thrown away. But at least they went to do something that was well worthwhile in NASA and the Concorde and lots of other things. Um, I'd like to read you, uh, I was asked to prepare something, so I'd like to read you uh, something 
which is mainly addressed to the young people of Canada. Because uh, our young people will obviously shape uh, the, uh, this great country. And uh, they were so important to me. I've spent the last 30 years in trying to teach young people hypersonics and various other things. Whether I've succeeded or not, I don't know. But um, they're, they're very special for me. But first I'd like to tell you a short story that might illustrate by example what all of you young people might achieve if you work hard enough at it. Nine years ago, unexpectedly, but very much appreciated, I was awarded an honorary Doctor of Engineering degree from the Royal Military College at Kingston. My family were invited to attend the various ceremonies and we were provided with the services of a young cadet as our host and general escort. He looked after us all so well, particularly my wife, who is disabled, that we established a very warm friendship with that young man and he and I corresponded for many years after the event. Then I, I guess we both got busy and we lost touch. So you can imagine how delighted I was to learn that that young man, now married with two children, has been chosen as one of Canada's new astronauts. His name is Jeremy Hansen, and you've probably seen it in the press. Jeremy is the perfect example of what you can achieve if you set your sights on a worthwhile goal and work hard enough to achieve it. While my own story is not as spectacular as that of Jeremy's at his age, I hope that it might be of some interest to you, so this is a very condensed version of my own walk through life. About 80 years ago, believe it or not, as a young student, like most of the young people here today, I had dreams of what I would like to contribute to the world based on the help and knowledge received from my teachers and mentors. However, in my wildest dreams, I could not have imagined that I would be embarking on a journey that would lead to being deeply involved in the design of the mighty Lancaster bomber the York Troop Transport, and many other of the Avro designs. Then being invited to come to Canada and lead the design team on the world's first regional jet, the Avro Canada Jetliner, which established so many performance records for transport aircraft, and it paved the way for the jet age which we all now enjoy. Then to be privileged to lead the design team on the fabulous Arrow and later to become deeply involved in the world's only supersonic passenger aircraft, the Concorde. I can only hope that all of you have that kind of opportunity and of course that you take it. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Do you want to hear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a, one, a, a long and winding road, often blocked by demons in the form of ill-informed and self-serving politicians who destroyed much of our powering work in Canada in acts of inconceivable madness. However, although they destroyed the hardware, and trying to destroy the evidence that the projects had ever existed, they could not destroy the technical knowledge that we had gathered in carrying out the groundbreaking projects of Malta. Many of the Avro Canada engineering team went to beyond the state of the art projects all over the world. A team of 25 of our senior engineers went to NASA and helped to put a man on the moon. You've heard about that. Others went to the UK with me to work on the first government-funded studies on the Concorde project. Others contrib 
contributed to Canada's entry into the field of atomic energy and space engineering in the form of Canada Arm and various forms of communication satellites. Many went into other aviation activities at the Avalon or American Aviation Companies and others left the industry altogether. The workforce at Avro Canada at Malton, which included Avro aircraft and Arenda engines, was recognized in the 40s and 50s by the people who really understood the industry as among the best in the world at that time. The abandonment of those highly professional and integrated teams was a great loss to Canada, especially at a time when Canada was acknowledged to be among the world leaders in state-of-the-art aircraft and jet engine design. Since that time, Canada has concentrated on its chosen niche in the design and development of private business and regional passenger aircraft and has been very successful in that field of aviation, becoming one of the world's major producers of regional sized aircraft. Canada has also become a major partner in astronautics and space activities and is very highly regarded in that endeavor. So looking to the future, there will still be many challenges to be faced and we now have to set our sights on those. I have little doubt that in the lifetime of you young people there will be a quantum leap in the field of communication technology which will change the way we live, especially for the underprivileged people of the world. The rapid growth of the art of teleconferencing could have a major impact on future business travel and air transportation is likely to become more oriented towards vacation and cargo activities. It's difficult to predict the future developments in space. It's going so quickly. But there are endless possibilities in that field. I came across a statement by Harrison Schmidt, the last man on the moon, and the only geologist to set foot on it in his foreword to William Melba's great book, Milton, Moon Missions. Smith claims that solar helium-3, found in samples brought back to Earth from his moon encounter, could be used as a highly efficient and environmentally safe fuel for fusion power generation. I believe that our moon has many more surprises for us, and I'm glad that we're going to it again. I also believe that despite the recent abandonment of the world's only supersonic passenger aircraft, there is a distinct possibility that you could see within your lifetime a hypersonic passenger aircraft that will cover the distance between Toronto and London or New York and Paris with one hour, within one hour, and fly from Toronto to Australia in less than three hours. We were studying such a project in our think tank at Malton over 50 years ago. There will certainly be no shortage of challenges for your generation during your lifetime. And I think that the best advice that I can give you is that you follow the guidelines written on a plaque behind my desk at Malton, which read, if something seems worthwhile, but is obviously impossible, do it anyway. Whatever you young people decide to do with your lives, I wish you every success and a long, productive and exciting life. Canada's future is in your hands. God bless you. team that were ever assembled anywhere. And so 
I'm, I'm so sad that so many of them have now flown off the planet and uh, there are very few of us left and those of us who are, are pretty old <laughs> uh, so I would like to say that whether you are up there or down here this is for us receive this first and then have a, a speech. We're doing it slightly different. And on behalf of the Canadian Aerospace Museum, for Jim as the first recipient, and to all of your, your colleagues, we really do have marvel at what you've been able to achieve. And on behalf of the, of the, the whole board of directors of the museum, this is yours. Thank you, Jim. It's a real honor to have you here today. I'd like to uh, welcome to the stage the MPP for York Centre, Monty Quinter. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter has served as Minister of Consumer and Commercial Relations, Minister of Financial Institutions, Minister of Industry, Trade and Technology, and Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. He currently serves as Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of International <coughs> Trade and Investment and Chair of the Ontario Investment and Trade Advisory Council and has a long record of community service. I'd like to thank Mr. Quinter for coming and addressing the Ontario Legislature this year with this message. Let's run this video with this. Mr. Speaker, February 20th was the 50th anniversary of the cancellation of the Avro CF 105 Aero Project. It was 50 years ago that the...